I have samples all around here that I think that uh, I can just probably show you. This particular sample right here is a sample that's going to show you that not only do gears wear out, but worms wear out as well. And unless you really look a step further, okay, into the, the gearbox, not just looking at an inspection cover up on top, okay, but go a little bit further, go a step further, spend an hour with that machine, drain the gear case oil out, and take a look at the worm. There are many worms that do wear out, and sometimes the gear, or the, I'm sorry, the bronze is a little bit harder than the worm. We have seen situations like that, where it, it's actually a chilled, what's known as a chilled bronze, which is really tough stuff. And for some reason or another, the worm shaft material may have been a little bit on the uh, weaker side. And still doing a good job, a commendable job, but a lot of times people don't realize that, that worms do wear out. So this is a, a sample of it. This is, not, this is the exception, not the rule. But you should be aware of the fact that you, you really should go a step beyond. I'll show you another situation where this is a section of a gear, which if you looked at that gear close up, you'll notice that there's really nothing wrong with it. So if you were going to inspect this machine, you'd say, well, hey, that gear looks all right. Nothing wrong there. But lo and behold, down below, those gear teeth are broken off. The worm teeth are broken off. Now, again, it's, it's the exception, not the rule. But we're seeing this more often in this industry. As we downsize parts and as we ask it to do more work, and sometimes these things are going 450 foot a minute, this situation can happen and does happen. Um, what I've been told is, it sounds like there's a bad thrust bearing in the machine. I've heard that from, from, a, number, from a number of people when they send in the warming gear. But this, this is a very hazardous situation. Okay, you could have a free fall situation. Someone could really, really get hurt. Um, would you, I just bring it here to show you that this could happen. And if you're going to inspect machines, certainly you want to go a step, a little step further. I'm talking about salespeople. I'm talking about um, when they go and take a look and say, hey, that gear looks fine. You know, they're not looking below. And I think it's worth the extra time if you're going to be taking on a contract or you're going to be quoting something to look a little bit, a little bit deeper into it. Uh, I would say this is more prevalent in a, uh, the faster machines. Sometimes after they do a five-year test, full load test on equipment where there's a, there's a sudden impact, it might have a, a bearing on breaking those gear teeth. Not always, but possible. Did that machine run after? It ran. Oh, absolutely. And I dare say that there are some machines that are out there that are running like this. And you really have to be aware of it. You should really look into it. And people have changed thrust bearings. The noise didn't go away. And they might change something else on a motor or whatever. But uh, I, I would think that the, the, one of the quickest ways of determining whether or not the, the integrity of the gears or the gear teeth are fine is to just take that drain the gear case oil, take that inspection cover off. That's the way it was used. To, it used to be done that way. And as time does not permit us to do things properly sometimes, you, you, you know, you put it off and say, well, hey, things look OK. But just be aware of it, OK? Again, the exception, not the rule. Well, it's, a, it's a, certainly a good question. But when I put this in, it's actually meshing with some of the gear teeth that are not doing the work. And it's preventing it from actually moving. So you, you, there's no indication that you have any backlash in the machine. Because no matter where you put it, that gear tooth is, is meshing. Okay? But, it's, but where all the pressure is, is, is usually down below here. So what's carrying this whole thing are, are some of the teeth that are uh, you know, in a different area. This is a, a sample of a very old style worm. This is known as a single thread worm. If you notice on one revolution, okay, on one, one revolution it went one thread, okay, or it went a certain amount of, of movement. This would be known as a single. Um, this particular one is a double, a double lead or a double start. You have a start here, 
and 180 degrees from it is another start there. So if you, if you went around and followed it, you'd see that it actually moved two teeth in one revolution. The faster machines, for instance, this might be a 200 foot a minute machine, and this might be a 100 foot a minute machine. And a 300 foot a minute machine would have more, probably another start, depending on the number of teeth and the ratio and how the manufacturer made, you know, made it. Um, here's another example. This is a, came out of a large old Otis machine. This is a four start. One, two, three, four. This happened to operate with a very slow motor. 800 RPM motor gave you a certain speed. Some of these happen to have 1200 RPM or maybe even 1700 RPM. Depending on how many revolutions the motor is, is traveling is really going to determine your ratios and what have you. This is the one I was talking about, about undercutting. This was a poor job in undercutting. I don't know if you can really see it that well, but you see all kinds of chatter marks and what have you. This was done on, on, a, on just a regular engine lathe. And it, uh, it chatted it up so much and, and, and made that, uh, those gear teeth or worm teeth so bad that it couldn't operate properly. But uh, it is a demonstration, or it could be used as a demonstration to show you what undercutting is uh, and what we try to do. They turn off the OD, and then they undercut on the inside, and then they drop the gear teeth in a little bit further. So you have more clearance. Okay. Another, another area, while I've got it up here, this is an area that had been metal sprayed. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all, but metal spraying has its application. We're not an advocate of metal spraying, but uh, if it does fail, it does wipe out a, a lot of the components, whereas if, if it was just a piece of regular steel shafting and it scored up, it would just score up. In this case, pieces of metal flake off and really do some, some destruction. Sometimes that stuff can come in and get into the gear teeth as well. So you should be aware of the fact that uh, metal spraying is, doesn't always have the best application with elevators. Motor shafts may be a little bit better, but there's a lot of loading on worms, and that loading certainly affects what kind of strength you've got in this area.